you know, you got hundred dollars needed in order to pass the valuation. From time to time, you will see traders that actually falling back because of that situation. It, it's like taking control of them. Even when you're reaching so close to the top, you gotta wait for the right moment to execute a good trade. Welcome everybody to another Funded Trader of Trader Pool. Today with me is Michael. Thanks for coming to this interview, buddy. Congrats on passing the evaluation. For those of you not familiar with what we do or we fund stock traders, you go through evaluation, you pass it, and then you become funded. Michael traded on $20,000 buying power, uh, the limited edition that we launched a few weeks ago, right? So before we'll dive into your dashboard and see the stats and the chart and everything, tell us a little bit about your trading style. I mostly look like using the screener and then find like the day gapper. It's like the day only move like 50% or 100%. I will find, I'm normally like shorting most of the time. And then, yeah. So, so you're shorting mostly penny stocks or a big cap? Penny stock. For the big cap, I'm normally shorting or buying. It's depend on like how they moves. So uh, let, uh, let's dive into that a little bit. What what are you looking for when it comes to penny stocks and more technical, more fundamentals? How do you handle that? So for penny stock, if I see like the, the stock is moving like 100%, so I will wait until it's like kind of a slowing down to the peak and then I will short it and put like from the small amount and then adding when it's going down. Got it. Are you looking for anything in particular on the fundamental side? So any macro news coming, you know, like FDA approval, or are you looking to high flow, low flow? What exactly is the nuances there? Oh yeah. I'm also looking for the volume and make sure like I can get in and get out. Cause sometimes when like it's moved a lot and then like sometimes the volume was not too much and then it's going to have a lot of spread. So it's going to <laughs> cancel your stop loss too i got you so a few more questions in regarding the penny stocks and then maybe we'll talk a little bit about the big techs because that's i like the fact that you're trading penny stocks but also big tech like amazon or nvidia as i saw on your on your chart what's the difference that you see between trading penny stocks and trading big tech i feel like when i'm trading penny stock i put more risk from my account and then like if i'm trading big tech it's like because they follow like the QQQ and then like Tesla, Nvidia and Google, they kind of like moving in the same direction. Yeah. So if like one of them already moving in the wrong direction, like most likely the other will follow. True, true. And why is it that you're putting more risk on penny stocks? Because like they move a lot. So that's why like if I put money on it, there will be like the, the loss and the profit, it will be like a lot more. Then like when I put in, in the big company, because they, in the big company, normally they move when there is a news or is an earning. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll share my screen and show your dashboard. Interesting to see that because first of all, for, for the guys that listen in, Michael, you've been with us for a while now, right? Um, you traded many at, attempts, many, and many tests, many evaluations. Yeah. How was it trading a lot of attempts, trading a lot of accounts and until you pass it, what, what got you to the phase where you actually pass it? Well, what was the difference between them? Like the couple first account that I purchased, like I put a lot of emotion on it. And sometimes I also like trading when I'm working. So I cannot really see the, the chart and then like, oh, I missed the opportunity or like I enter where I shouldn't enter. And then I just lost it. Yeah, I, I can understand that. This is definitely one of the keys that we're always talking about. It's just, you know, you got to be fully prepared and focused to your day in order to really trade it well. And okay, so I'm sharing my screen right now. And you you guys at home see the account, $20,000 buying power. Like I said, the mini buying power limited edition. The goal was thirteen fifty, And you reach that. Obviously, each trader gets his uh, max loss and daily pause as well. And this is the chart that we will talk about in a second because it's very interesting uh, the way it looks and the behavior 
of your trading. You have also some parameters, risk parameters and rules. And of course, some stats, best trade, uh, best day, risk reward, pretty nice, one to two. And success rate is also fine, 44%. Going down to the trading, uh, the trades that you made. So Tesla, NVIDIA, CI as well. And, and like you said, also some of them in the back was... Some of them were uh, penny stocks also on the different accounts. But the most inter interesting part is talking about that, right? Because you you had a rough start, dropped to minus 400 almost, pulled yourself out of it all the way to the top. Tell me about that. What happened when you dropped and also how you got yourself out of that situation when you actually went to a drawdown. I think when I bought this stock and then like I put a little bit too much risk and then like I, I get my daily post and then the next day like I it happened to be like a lot of stock it's like moving a lot like the the penny stock L-E-A-S-E and like they, yeah. they are they're moving a lot and then like that's when I purchased them and then I get like the, the profit and after that when I get to the top I start to Lower my risk and then just put like small money in like Infidia or Tesla. Gotcha. And then you, and then you reach that moment when you almost reach it at the top, the, the profit target, and you actually had a fallback, right? Yeah. And, and you know, I've seen many traders that having the same thing, right? The same issue. It calls, it calls a fear of success, FOS, fear of success. We have fear of losing, fear of missing out, fear of success. And that's the thing here, when you almost reach to the top and you, you know, you got a hundred dollars needed in order to pass the valuation, from time to time, you will see traders that actually fall in back because of that situation. It, it's like taking control of them and uh, very hard to handle when it comes to just finding the right one and wait for the right trade in order to reach that goal. Tell me what was in your mind when you traded in this area and also the drop that you have before jumping up again. I think during that time, I just like looking for something. Oh, I only need 50 bucks. I only need 100 bucks. And then like I put like a little risk and then like, oh, it's going the wrong direction. And then like, and then my emotion just put more and more and then it's going down a lot. Yeah, that's totally understandable. And I mean, like I said, many traders been in your spot when you only need that 50 bucks and you're getting into a position just to get it over with. But even when you're reaching so close to the top, you got to wait for the right moment to execute a good trade. And you went down pretty much uh, strongly, you know, but yeah, from 1300 all the way to 700. And then you find your rhythm again until you reach that top. So that's very nice. And congrats again for passing the challenge. Thank you so much. Yeah. And uh, I mean, from here, the last thing that I would ask you is, you know, if you need to give one tip, the, the best tip that you can for a trader that, you know, going through the same process as you did, what you would tell them to focus on, basically? Focus on control your emotion and control your, your risk. Because sometimes when... You start and then like you put too much risk and then you meet your daily loss and then you cannot trade anymore. So maybe in the beginning to start with like small risk and then like when you get profit, you can put more risk on that. Nice. Nice. So definitely this is something that coming up very, a lot of the times from other traders that just controlling the risk wise, understanding how much risk to put on a trade. Yeah. So it makes sense. So, Michael, thanks so much for this interview. I hope the guys at home liked it and got more value from it. For those of you not familiar with what we do, go ahead and check us out at tradepool.com. Join us. Maybe you will become the next funded trader and we will get this interview online as well. That's it, Michael. Congrats. Maybe we'll do another interview once you get your payout. Take care for now. For Bye, sure. Guys. Thank you. Bye.